Hello, beautiful soul family. Rebecca here, your vibe mentor. Welcome to Monday Magic Intuitive Energy Reading, where I offer to you my experience of the recent energy, the current energies, and advice on how to move forward as is being delivered to me by divine guidance in this moment. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you have not already signed up for the 10X Year Success Accelerator, please do so. I'm so excited to offer this free three-day accelerator to help you understand how to expand, how to step into your highest self, how to become all that you can be and remove those pesky little blocks that keep you from doing that so that you can be successful, you can build a business, you can be of service and finally step into your purpose. So if you have not yet um, connected with me, comment below, I'll send you the link. Otherwise, I'll see you. We start tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Time. So these are timeless energy readings. I am starting to clarify this because I'm realizing while the first minute or two that covers the recent solar energy um, is specific to this moment in time, there is a significant portion, maybe 95% of this message is going to be timeless. It really um, depends on when the divine is uh, bringing you to this message and um, it likely will correlate to what you are needing to hear in this moment. So the solar weather has been active over the last week. Um, after the, the video I posted last Monday, um, we had uh, a total of 29 layers between Sunday and Monday last week. And that's kind of how we started the week. Um, we had multiple CME brush buys, as well as one um, that did make impact. We've had many, many, too many to count M flares all throughout the week. We even had a 3.38X class solar flare on Friday, which was followed by six C class flares on Friday, seven on, um, I'm sorry, six on Saturday, seven on Sunday, and eight today. So it's just, it's just one after the other. It just keeps coming. Um, they're also projecting uh, a huge solar flare to arrive tomorrow. Um, you want to check that one out because it looks like there's a, a cannibal solar flare, um, which essentially means that three different flares were shot at the earth. And the last one being the biggest one absorbs the other two as it uh, charges towards earth. Um, so if you want to know more about that, check out St uh, Stefan Burns on YouTube. Um, he is a scientist and uh, far more capable of articulating um, the impacts that we should expect. Although I can tell you um, that's expected to make landfall uh, right around midnight tonight, central time. Um, so you'll have to adjust for your time zone. Uh, we did also have the new moon on the ninth, uh, relatively quiet-ish um, if you compare it to other new moons and full moons, but bringing in the solar weather, um, it did seem, it's so fascinating to me that there's a correlation between solar weather and these new moons and full moons, but um, there's that. That's kind of what we've experienced. I know on Friday after that X-class solar flare, I was tired. Um, we had an amazing, beautiful live trauma spotting session in the Vibe Tribe community. So uh, we needed some rest after that. So it was kind of offline for a bit. Um, and it's it's interesting, again, how these solar flares can either energize us or make us feel really tired. Um, but again, just honor the body. That's really what's most important in these experiences. I've also noticed, um, and I did a video two weeks ago, I think that was titled um, Intensity Increases or is Sustained. And we are very much in the eclipse window um, with the first eclipse coming up on March 25th. And then the April 8th, um, great, uh, great eclipse uh, that crosses uh, the U.S. and creating that X over Texas. Um, so th that's interesting that it's already starting to, sh to show us some of its effects um, by what's going on in Texas. It's, I've also noticed, too, the, um, there's sort of an activation of the nervous system, whether it's from the solar weather or just the energy that we are experiencing, the collective evolution, however you want to label it, doesn't really matter. Um, but there's a lot of activation um, energy available. And keep in mind, something like a lightning strike can activate your nervous system. So this is not unusual, um, but it is helpful to be aware of when you feel that activation. Maybe it seems like something in life triggered you. Maybe you just had a cup of coffee. Maybe that cup of coffee affected you um, more intensely than it typically would, that's when we know that there's other energies at play. There's other reasons for us to feel that activation. 
I've also noticed that a lot of, um, there's been, a, of course, purging and releasing seems to be an ongoing theme for many, many years now. Um, it ebbs and flows. It has been sort of at a peak over the last couple of weeks. Uh, that includes fears being brought to the surface. Um, I have found that the life purpose path will uh, bring you the gift of helping you face all of your greatest fears. If there's anything that you've ever said, you know, I never think I could withstand that. I could never, I could never risk losing all of my money. I could never risk bankruptcy. I could never list, risk uh, being homeless. I could never risk losing um, family members. Whatever the, the greatest fear is, it life will bring you these opportunities to work through that fear, to face that fear. And that's similar to the way the energies had, has been experienced both for myself as well as all the clients that I speak with. Um, it's it's fun to see that these patterns are playing out in many different lives. Not that it's fun for anyone to suffer, um, but it's it's helpful to be reminded we're not alone in this, that we're, we're all in this together. Um, so the guidance, the guidance, the timeless guidance on how to move forward is remembering that sometimes we have to go through a breakdown to be able to break through that part of us knows these these fears that keep being brought to the surface these fears that keep coming up there's a part of us that knows we're not meant to do this alone and yet we live in the day and age of of, of uh, put yourself first and and take care of yourself and to some extent that is necessary we shouldn't you know lower ourselves to lowest priority but at the same time, we also have to remember we're not made to do this alone. Yes, we need community, we need each other, but we also, most importantly, we need the divine. And so when we're being uh, asked to face these fears, we're going through the breakdown to break through, it's helping us remember not to try to do it alone, to partner with the divine, that life breaks us down to the point of almost giving up so that we can learn how to fully surrender to the divine, to God, source, creator, um, to to the universal plan for our lives. And, and I want to clarify that or, or say that again, surrender to the fullest. I have been going through, um, I think I'm close to a year and a half now of being asked to surrender more and feeling like I did. I, I surrendered as much as I can. And then finding there's a new layer. There's more to surrender. There's a next level. And when we feel like, there's nothing left, that's when we have fully surrendered. When we feel like the dust at the, the bottom of the, the mortar and pred, ped, uh, pestle, I can't, for some reason I couldn't say that the other day either, um, but it, it's, it's sort of that grinding to dust feeling where it's just like, I have nothing left to cling to. I have nothing left to fear. I, I almost don't even want to use, use, use the words I anymore. It's interesting how I and me and my, these self-referential thoughts, they, they create pain and suffering. And when we can let go and we can be completely emptied, we are making space for the divine to work. That in our weakness, we have made space for God's strength to come and finally move through our life. But that requires us getting out of the way. That there is an emptiness that is making space, an emptiness that is not empty in the sense of I feel broken and depressed and sad, spiritually empty, but rather I have emptied out this vessel, my mind, the expectations, the ego that gets in the way of the divine moving through me, right? And so it's a fully letting go of control and that's surrender to the fullest, to be completely empty, to be nothing. That's where we find the stillness that allows us to know the, the highest authority and power of our creator in our life, right? It reminds me of the, the phrase, not by my strength, but thine, right? Thy will be done. Masculine energy is pushing. Masculine energy is doing. Masculine energy is controlling. It is the ego, the edging God out. That is not powerful. That's actually is very egoic the real strength is pure surrender and that's hard it's difficult to let go of control and this message this theme of surrender more surrender more surrender more 
has been so profound in my life and the, the, the grinding to dust to become nothing so that we can rise into who we were made to be. It was beautifully supported by a, a, a clip of a song that is about to be released that came to me yesterday by one of my favorite artists, St. Finnegan. Uh, his album, I think it's not yet released. It's called Milk and Honey and the song Surrender is is the beautiful message that came to me um, in multiple different ways, which is fun how the, the divine reiterates something that we're, we're meant to receive. Um, but check that out. You can find little clippets on um, Instagram. Um, just Google it. There's plenty out there. Um, it's a beautiful song and it really reiterates this, this juxtaposition in learning to use the power and authority that we've been gifted, learning to use our magic, which I'm going to do a video on that next, um, learning to, to call in with power and authority, the, the divine gift of creation that we are asked to learn to utilize and yet, right, juxtaposition, the duality, and yet full and complete and total surrender, full and complete radical acceptance, letting go of any attachment, any expectation, right? That much of our suffering is created by that masculine egoic pushing and doing to create the manifestation, right? We're creating the manifestation instead of drawing it in, receiving it, being magnetic. And that requires the letting go of expectation, right? In human design, they talk about deconditioning. It is a full and complete surrender of everything that we thought we were, right? That there is, there is such a peace. The other phrase is the peace that passes all understanding. There is such oh, freedom, <laughs> peace, stillness, um, happiness even in the letting go of everything, every expectation. It is, it is um, what they say, taking up your cross, to die to yourself, to let go of the me, the my, the I, the I want, what about me? Why don't I have this yet? Those self-referential thoughts, that's the ego, that's the suffering. It's illogical to think that the very thing that we seek comes in letting go of everything we ever wanted or thought we were or thought we needed, right? That's radical acceptance. To to acknowledge everything as it is. Oftentimes we try to manifest from a place of lack. I, I don't have enough, um, you know, use all of the, the key buckets, right? Wealth, success, health, love. Um, I don't have enough, right? I don't have enough love. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough success. I don't have enough freedom. And in that we try to call in the thing that we think we need, but really Yes, we ask, and when we ask, we will eventually receive, but we have to go through the process of healing and becoming so that we are that attraction point. We are magnetic. We're able to draw that in, and it requires such a deep level of understanding. Layer by layer by layer, we go through all of the limiting beliefs, all of the uh, unfortunate or uh, uh, unresourceful thought perspectives and and behaviors and hypervigilant tendencies and masculine doing and all of these things. And you think you've got it all figured out and then there's another layer and you think, okay, now this is it. This is the thing I was missing. And then there's another layer. But the beauty of our creator and of the divine is that we're never done until we have received the thing we asked for. And so that just requires humility and, and complete surrender and saying, okay, what what next? What else? I got nothing left. I'm clinging to nothing. I am nothing. Finally, I'm emptied so that you can fill me. And we can ask for the discipline. We can ask for the help to have the discipline to follow the guidance. If we're asked to let go of, of caffeine, we're asked to fast for three days, we're asked to let go of our phones or a social media addiction, we're asked to let go of alcohol or whatever your coping mechanism is, that's going to require a, a level of discipline. But on the other side of that letting go, it's part of the emptying out. It's part of the necessary process to be able to receive what we're asking for. So remember, 
all of this, everything that's tangible, everything that we see or we think we want, this is all part of the illusion, part of the, the veil, part of the simulation, part of the game. It's not really real. It doesn't really belong to us. The only thing that actually is uh, worth clinging to or worth um, expecting <laughs> is going to be on the other side. It's intangible. And so it, it helps to remember it's not my body. It's not my life. It's not my house. It's not my stuff. It's not my clothing. It's none of it matters. So I can let it all go, which means I have even more levels of gratitude for the things that do show up because it's not mine. And so I'm not attached to it. And when it comes, I'm grateful. And when it goes, it's no big deal. So when you start to say, I let go of the expectations, I completely empty myself, thy will be done. That's when we are freed up to be able to be carried to that place that allows us to actually have our true needs met and to re receive the things that we've asked for. Our only job is to, re to rest and receive. And I know that's difficult for those of us who've experienced trauma and live in hypervigilance and we love our masculine doing energy. Yes, we have to empty so that we receive guidance so we can take that divinely guided action, but it's in that order, not the action and then the guidance. Be still, receive the, uh, the guidance, then follow and take the action. So we want to watch with curiosity, watch with awe, allow ourselves to receive, and then things will start to flow in our lives. So again, if you don't understand any of this or you want more information, join us for the 10X Your Success Accelerator. Again, we start tomorrow in a private Facebook group. Um, I will link it down below. Um, if you'd like to join us, just click that link and you can jump in. Doors will open tomorrow at 9 a.m. and then I will be live uh, for the next three days at 11 a.m. Central Time. And this is the key, not only to our success and our expansion, but also to understand this so that we can help lead others. Leadership is living by example. So we lead by doing these things in our lives. And if you feel called to, or you're already in a leadership position, you're already coaching or mentor or a healer, this is for you. This next three days, this 10X or success accelerator, it will help you not only understand where you may have um, some blocks or some things, to, new layers, right? To help open you to that expansion, to help you thrive, to help you be able to help others. And if you're not already in that position, but you feel called to it, this is also for you. Again, it will help you step into your purpose, your mission, and finally being able to get out of our own way so that we can receive everything that divine wants us to be able to receive our abundance birthright. All right. I love you, my friends. I will see you on the next one. I hope you have a beautiful and blessed week. Take care of yourselves. Drink water. That one's coming through. We'll talk soon. <laughs>